Hey, y'all. I'm really looking forward to this conversation with Janelle Phillips, founder and co-owner of Sansara Resort Panama. Janelle is currently there in Panama, and we are really looking forward to exploring all of the wonders and adventures and beautiful things that the retreat center has to offer and its beautiful staff as well. Uh, Janelle is awesome. I want to tell you a little bit about Janelle. Janelle was actually the reason why I said yes to Sansara. On top of all of the most incredible things that Sansara offers, Janelle feels welcoming, warm, um, very detailed. If you know anything about me, I love details. <laughs> and, um, just like there is a safe place to land with Janelle, Janelle's staff and at her retreat center. So a little bit about Janelle, um, with a passion for creating a sense of home and encouraging others to embrace a fulfilling, empowered life, Janelle Phillips brought Sansara Resort to life. As the co-owner and operator of Sansara, she goes beyond her managerial duties and brings her expertise as the primary yoga teacher. Janelle is thrilled to have the opportunity to share her love for teaching in this beautiful place um, and hosting people here at Sansara. Janelle is renowned for her unique and lighthearted approach to the practice of yoga. She firmly believes in the transformative power of it and its ability to nurture and strengthen both the body and the spirit. When Janelle is not guiding her students on the mat, she finds her, her joy in spending quality time with her beloved husband, Mike, and two children, Asher and Ocean. Whether it's running along the beach or simply enjoying cherished moments together, family remains an essential aspect of her life. Welcome, Janelle. I'm really glad to be here with you. Thank you, Shelby. That was such a beautiful introduction. I appreciate that. Um, it's such a beautiful opportunity for me to be able to just be on your podcast. I find it, it speaks to who you are as a person and just also the partnership that we are embarking on is just really creating this beautiful foundation, um, that we're walking through this journey together that, you know, yes, you're coming to Panama and you're bringing this beautiful retreat, but that there is something deeper beyond it. And it began with just our connection and our relationship and really what we wanted to create together for your audience and for just like the global consciousness altogether. So thank you. Yes. Yeah. I'm excited. Thank I want you. to hear about the center and, you know, what inspired you to choose this place, this land, what happened for you when you found it? Um, anything you want to say about it? Sure. I'd love to tell the story. It's, it's one of those questions I think guests ask quite frequently because they say yes to this retreat experience and then they get on this bus ride and then, you know, they're like, so where, sorry, where are we going? And how did anybody ever find this place? And that was sort of the journey for my husband and I roughly almost 13 years ago. We bought a plane ticket. We wanted to go to Panama. We thought we'd go surfing and we just sort of bumped around the country until the final, I'm going to say five or six days, we found ourselves in Kambutal. And this place is literally the end of the road in Panama. You know, it's where the mountains kiss the sea, the road ends and the national park begins. And so we, yeah, we got there and we just felt this immediate sense of peace kind of wash over ourselves. And I don't know, it was this magical five days of, you know, having just so much fun and no one else was around. And there was just this beauty in the space between. And um, we got back home to Canada. We're originally from Canada. And we had this moment in our life where we were like, what are we doing with ourselves? You know, what is it that we want to do? We were getting married that year. And we just sort of looked at each other and we're like, what if we went back to that beach town, Kambutal, and bought some property and we sold everything and we could create like a yoga and surf inspired space. And we just did it. And it sounds like wild, but it was this really big dream. And it was a complete shared vision between the two of us that really progressed over time. So when that decision was made, 
a few weeks after our trip, we basically had given ourselves just under a year to try to figure out a plan. And we moved back, we moved to Panama um, at the very beginning of December, 2012. And we had no plan. We had no property purchase. We had nothing. We just had literally four bags and this vision that it would just come into our existence. And it could sound kind of woo -woo or hokey, but I don't know. I think ignorance was bliss in some regards. Um, and we didn't know what our limit was. So in that way we could go and reach a potential that we never knew possibly could exist. And for something bigger beyond us, it was behind us the whole way. We managed a few weeks into the project where we were kind of just feeling the land, deciding where is it that we could, we could maybe buy some property? How does this all work? This is very new for us. We just managed to meet the right people. And we ended up in conversation with this couple from Spain who was looking to sell their beachfront titled property and they needed to do so quickly. And we had a conversation. We went to the property. It was raw, untouched land. Mike and the husband, they walked around the property with machetes, sort of carving the path to just see what is it that we're going to buy. And myself and his wife, Rosa was her name. We just stood at the front gates of, I say gates, but just on the roadside. It's actually where the gates are at Sansara, which is kind of ironic. And we just stood there and we started talking in our broken Spanish and English. And I just said, like, why? How long have you had this space? And she said, we've had it for seven years. Okay what is it that you wanted to do with it? And she said, I've always imagined it would be a yoga retreat center. And I almost like, almost wanted to just faint. I was so um, God smacked and dumbfounded with that comment. Like, oh, <laughs> me too. I couldn't even say it. It felt so strange to just be like, oh yeah, that's what I want to do. And then I said, well, what are you doing when you go back home to Spain? And she said, well, I'm a special education teacher. So I'm going back to teach. And that was actually my career prior to becoming a yoga teacher. I used to teach special education. And so it was just this odd running of parallels. And I don't know, like there's the dreamers, there's the doers, and it was like this handoff. And before you knew it, the whole process was underway. It was like a handshake agreement. A week later, it's titled. A few weeks later, we're starting construction. Mike is doing all of like the footwork and groundwork for land preparation. And it just was this beautiful flowing process. And two and a half years later, we opened our door. And meanwhile, while Mike was doing the construction and the building of the property, I was working behind the scenes, navigating, what does a website look like? How do, am I gonna convince people that they should believe in me? Because retreats take time to plan. And I always suggest at least eight to 10 months in advance that we should plan and prepare. So if we don't even have a space built, how am I gonna get people to like really trust that I'm authentic and that, I'm not going to like feed them a bunch of bullshit. Like this is going to be real. It'll be ready. I promise. And I did that. I just would like code call and I would be like, hi, I really find your story and your yoga space, you know, seems really exciting. And notice that you did a retreat in Costa Rica. I'd love to invite you to my new space. And people would be like, okay, sure. Send me uh, some pictures of the rooms. And then I'd, we don't really have any pictures of the rooms yet. Like I promise it's going to be ready. And it was just sort of beautiful in the sense of how much trust was given to me and our team and just I don't know who who we are as people but they're like people were like you know what yeah okay oh we'll put a deposit down we'll see you <laughs> in April of 2014 and before I knew it we hit the ground running and I think it was this beautiful momentum where we didn't have this leg time between finishing the project having a year now to like establish our brand it just was always working in this beautiful flow and honestly, I attribute a lot of our success to just that heart and the energy that's behind it. It's, mm. um, like I said, it's a family-based business with a lot of love and um, compassion and integrity. And <clears throat> we just reflect that with the people that we work with. And that's really what inspires us. Mm. Wow. What an incredible story. All the synchronicities. It sounds like there is ease and flow and like, you're just supposed to be there. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. I, as I'm imagining hosting a retreat there, I often just think about the power of the land and the space and not even having to do much, really just allowing ourselves to sink in and be held by that place. And I was wondering if you could speak towards the landscape, the land, what it's like when you just sit down and 
allow yourself to just exist there? Um, I think that people don't even really realize how we are, how fatigued we become, how, how, how our bodies are just constantly in this go mode, how our central nervous system is just always firing and we become so adapt to just thinking that's normal and not feeling a hundred percent. And I think some of the most beautiful messages I receive after retreat and what I see firsthand is people's ability to just slow themselves down while on retreat, <coughs> excuse me. <clears throat> and that speaks to so many different layers. That's like noticing just how we don't over itinerize anybody. I really want people to just move at that space and pace of nature. We work with the tides. Like we literally say, vibe with the tides. This is when the surf is gonna be good. Mother nature really dictates our activities. Um, how we present the food is very thoughtful. Like we don't, at dinner time, we don't even give people an option to um, have to choose. We're saying, you know, decision fatigue is a real thing. This is what's for dinner tonight. Because I think we can all know we've had those conversations like, what am I going to make? Who, who's cooking? I don't want people to have to have any of that extra clutter because I think it takes up so much space and that we really just try to do a beautiful job of laying out, giving people agency and choice, really encouraging to them to find and be okay with some of the discomfort that can come with slowing down and knowing that that's also super normal. And I mean that in the most respectful way. It's like, it takes a bit, like there's this, I almost say people come to Sansara with this like superficial parka kind of wrapped around them. Like it's their security blanket and they're kind of hard and it's like this exterior to protect. And that again, is just a very classic. And then by the end of the retreat, the parka is off and not, not everything is just free flowing and they're moving at a totally different space. And energetically, it's just like this receivement and it's kind of like you get what you give. So there's like, I can give and then I'm going to get, and then it's going to work this way. And I think that works on a lot of different layers and levels during the experience. And it's all started from the beginning of where the space is. Mm. Yeah. That sounds incredible. Sounds like kind of becoming one with the space and not having to be separate from it. Yeah. I, I You nailed it. I couldn't, <laughs> couldn't articulate that better. Yeah, I, I do. I, I see it. And I think that's why even when we choose how we mindfully choose employment, we, I really encourage people. It's like, you know, this is a space like Kamutal is going to be different. It's going to be an acclimation outside of city and norms. And I really, you need to really want to be here so that you can do your best self, be your best self for your job. But if you don't like where you are, then everything is not, is going to be affected. And I think that's what has separated us in like a service industry way as well is our staff is incredible. They really love what they do, but I think they love where they live. They are so proud of their land. And I think that that is, is shown through so many different avenues and experiences hmm. Very grateful for them. Yeah, that was actually my next question. I was curious about who the staff is, who we will meet and just, mm. uh, They're just amazing. You, that will be, you know, for any listeners too, that are maybe considering joining Shelby, like I really do encourage you to take a look at our trip advisor and just to like read the reviews. And I don't mean that in a way to like puff myself up or, or flex at all. It's just, it's the people that are really the heartbeat of Sansara. And we do do a wonderful job really employing locally and within Panama. And I think that's also really special just to be able to pr provide for the local economy and to really allow there to be like a beautiful, sustainable growth with tourism. And I think when you go to a different country, you want to really experience and get to know the people who are a part of it. Absolutely. Yeah. I I have so many questions. I'm I'm curious, you know, obviously everybody's experience is different who comes on retreat there. I love the parka analogy. Mm -hmm. And I I imagine a lot of people are wondering, you know, what will I experience when I'm there? How how could healing happen for me in just a week? What um kind of support is here? I don't know. Anything you want to speak to in terms of your retreat participants? past experience for me I feel like because Sansara has such an incredible foundation 
of what we represent as a retreat center. It really allows the host that we partner with to really put a special seasoning on top of the pre-existing foundation. So I think for me, I feel like that's what separates us from a lot of different centers is that we don't just throw you the key and say, hey, shall we figure it out? Because there would be the big disconnect. And so I feel like we are breaking a few of those norms because I really want people, I want to kind of rewrite what it means to retreat and what it means to heal. And that, you know, a lot of times it speaks to a predominantly female audience who is okay to accept maybe this is the help I need, or this is the pause and space and time that I wish is I feel like retreats are for everybody, everyone. I think that healing is <laughs> an essential part of growth. And I feel like by having partner with different types of retreat leaders, like whether it's an adventure retreat, that also has its healing and wellness component. There could be, you know, a yoga specific retreat, but that's just like a very small piece of the puzzle. I really appreciate partnering with people like you who see wellness as a complete overarching system and that there's different avenues to weave in, like what can happen in a surf experience and how can I, how shall be as a leader, touch in on that and weave it all together. And I think that's what separates the good from the great leaders is seeing that what does Sensara have as its foundations, its offerings, its, you know, our objective and how do you as a facilitator weave in some of the teachings to allow the healing and transformation to take place kind of across the board for every, everyone. Because everyone's going to have a different experience from the waterfall to why did that sunset horseback feel like a breakthrough? Why did this moment on a hike take me to a different space? Where did I transcend to? You know, healing, go. it's just it doesn't have any, it doesn't have any boundaries per, to, per se. So I don't know. I feel like that might be a long-winded answer to your question, but at the end of the day, I think everyone has a takeaway from an experience here. Yeah. I really appreciate that direction you took it because there are so many different ways that we will explore, <laughs> whether it's surfing together, whether it's in the, the shala doing yoga or somatic movement, whether it's receiving nervous system regulation practices, whether it's a conversation you have with a new friend by the pool, whether it's in the middle of the night when you're in deep restorative rest, sleeping in one of the beautiful um, casitas. Is that what you call them? Cabanas, casitas. Cabanas, yeah. <laughs> it could be just in a moment. And, you know, the healing, that's what healing's about. It's not necessarily we go to the yoga shala and get the healing there. It's we're preparing ourselves to welcome it however it shows up in life and to be able to be there for it as fully as possible. Yeah. And it's interesting. I think people have already decided by like choosing conscious travel as well. I already feel like is the first step as I mean, many of us maybe in our youth or in time, we've gone on those different holidays that really do not do anything for us. They do not fill us up. We walk away from that feeling more tired, depleted, like a loss of energy. And I think as we move out of kind of the last couple of years, as the pendulum starts to shift, I really hope and can only like for everyone else's well-being is just like to move that mindset and, uh, and see how if we step away from our busy lives and just like the chaos and then we move into this like conscious sort of travel, how can we return back home and not be like firing on fumes? Because I think people get to this point in their daily life where they're just on the, on the fumes and then they go, they fill it up and then they return right back to zero. I really hope that the gift and the takeaway from a lot of these events is like, how do we, how do we move into just having some of these moments back at home and that they become a daily part of our practice yeah. so that we're not so depleted. And I, I really do think people like yourself offer that opportunity for people to, you know, maintain that well being. Yeah. And the folks, most of the folks who are coming are in some kind of support role, whether they're teachers, therapists, coaches, doctors, wealth, wellness, or health professionals. And it's not like we can just go on vacation and all of a sudden everything feels good. We get the opportunity at Sansara to slow down and notice the places where we block ourselves from receiving to create space that feels safe enough to allow ourselves to have restorative rest, to be able to slow down a lot of us are so used to and addicted to going a million miles an hour, not feeling our feelings, just careening towards burnout. 
Um, and a vacation doesn't help because, well, for some folks it will, but this kind of experience adds to the ability to really take up the nourishment from the moment, from the place. And when our nervous systems aren't regulated, it's harder to be able to really go home feeling full. And that's the hope. Yeah, I think that's a very beautiful objective. And I really, really hope people lean into the opportunity to take part with you in May. Um, I'm really excited also just to be able to host. I feel like this is one of the very first specific kind of somatic retreats that is kind of aimed towards wellness practitioners. Um, how did you come up with the idea? If you don't mind me flipping the questions back to you. Yeah. Well, it's really, that's mostly who I work with, you know, doing trauma therapy, doing business coaching, doing everything. And it all has a foundation of somatic support, trauma healing, because that's my specialization. That's how I trained. And that's what I love. And so I wanted to create an experience for all of the people who come learn with me and work with me one-on-one to be able to meet each other, to be surrounded by hopefully like-minded folks, to, um, you know, everyone I work with is all over the world and to have a meeting place where we get to be in person together and not on Zoom and practice what we're doing in the spaces that um, I facilitate. And I love getting to support people who are supporting other people. We all need it, every single one of us. And there tends to be a mentality in, not for everyone, not across the board, where we we overgive and under receive. And so I want to change that game so that we feel full and give from a place of fullness and it's sustainable and we can widen our capacity to receive more, to give more, to be able to show up in the world and our families and our communities with the earth in a way where we are truly supported and we can, we can hold it. And that's what the work I do does. So I'm just really looking forward to doing that in person somewhere beautiful. I love it. I love it. We can't wait. And I get to be the one that can support you through that process. So there you are. Absolutely. Well, one thing I love telling people about the retreat is it's a five-star luxury retreat center. I mean, and this is the perfect setup for just getting to receive, Yeah. right? For learning to receive. And I wonder if you could tell us about that. Like what does five-star luxury mean at a retreat center? Oh man, it's so funny. My husband and I have this conversation. We're like, how do we manage as two kids from the prairies to receive this accolade? And for me, I think it's, we have like five-star service and we are what I call barefoot luxury. So there's not going to be a butler following you around. (laughs) Sorry, (laughs) but it's not happening. Um, It's just like all of those creature comforts of high quality linens, air conditioning, being seaside. But for us, I think we're we're the creme de la creme is just our service and how much we care about people. And that's what makes people feel so good. So I think five stars more of a description description of how do we feel when we walk away from a space? I think you're going to feel like five stars in your heart, knowing that the people there really care about you. And um, it's of course a beautiful space um, built with a lot of intention. but it's no foo-foo. We're not addressing people by their last names. We want to get everyone on a first name basis and just really get to know people and what it is that maybe they need to feel more supported on their time with us. Beautiful. Tell us about the food. I'm really Ooh. excited about the food. <laughs> oh, I think this is why people come back every year. Um, it's either surfing or food is why people come back. Um, so the food is really it's a lot of effort. I feel like we spend a lot of time in menu development. And again, because we want to be able to cater to everyone, we want everyone to feel so good. We really, I feel like we do a really great job with dietaries, any allergies. Um, It's not a matter of if you have an intolerance to something, we don't just take that off of the plate. It's like a dish that's created specifically for you. If you have any sort of preference, um, We work with a beautiful local farm who produces all of our um, fruits and vegetables from hydroponics. So it's like organic and local produce. The fish beyond the reef is amazing. We get local eggs. We make our own yogurts and we make our own breads. Everything is made to serve. Um, There's no buffet lines. Everything is off of a beautiful menu for people to just pick their way through. 
every night we do a big harvest table where the chefs come out and do they do a chef's night every single night and a lot of times it looks like three course services so you'll sit down there'll be like a mocktail or a cocktail pairing you'll hear about we have a very conscious bar program so again you can have different pairings throughout your service with your appetizer your entree and a dessert every night which no one can be that mad about um yeah the food is so good and we have a beautiful team I'm very grateful for them Mm. I am so looking forward to that. And <laughs> we get questions, you know, do you, are vegan, is it vegan friendly? Is it gluten-free friendly? Is it omnivore? Is it, and it sounds like all, it's all the things. All the things. This is me and my daily life. I'm like, so what are we having for dinner? Should we call Sansara? <laughs> <laughs> do you think they would walk it over? Should we go get it? Yeah, we should. Um, yeah. It's hard to want to cook when it's that good right across the street from me. <laughs> I'm so excited. Yay. Well, is there anything else that you'd like to share just in welcoming and inviting people to your home? I just really want to just share with everyone that if you are considering just, or if you know you're at that point in your life where you just need a little bit of like a jump start to just remove it, like to shake things up and just to get things going. I do think that this is a beautiful opportunity to join Shelby and to just kind of move into some deeper, newer space and to be a little bit uncomfortable and to be in new waters, literally and figuratively, and to to just see the growth that comes from the discomfort and know that you're going to be very comfortable in many ways doing it. So thank you, Shelby. I really appreciate just your trust and um, just the opportunity to talk a little bit about Sansara and your retreat. And she's an amazing person. So even if you don't know her and you don't work with her, know that all retreats that we offer are open for everybody. Absolutely. Yes. Oh, well, yeah. thank you for spending the time today. And you. I know I'm looking forward to meeting you in person. And now I'm sure a whole bunch of more people are too. <laughs> I'm excited. I can't wait. We have like a few months, you guys. So you can have a lot of time to pack your bags, get yourself organized, buy the plane ticket. They're expensive. So do it soon. And um, we'll get you down here nice and safely. Awesome. Yay. Yeah.